Hi, I'm Rachel, currently 28 years old. I started dating a senior colleague, George, at the company I joined right after graduating from university six years ago, and we got married after two years. Initially, when I went to greet them before our marriage, I had a good relationship with my in-laws. However, one day, I received a sudden call from my mother-in-law, Kathy, who scolded me. Kate's had a grandchild, you have been taking your time and now we have been beaten to it. This Kate is the sister of my father-in-law James, which makes her my aunt. We live near my husband's family home and it seems Kathy was quite upset that someone else had grandchildren first. Recently, whenever she meets her sister, she only brags about her grandchildren, which seems to make Kathy feel bad. I'm jealous. No, I'm not. She just brags and then runs off. It really annoys me. It's clear she's just jealous. I sighed after hanging up the phone. When we first married, Kathy seemed like a fun, talkative person. Friendly and easy to talk to, our conversations never seemed to end. But thinking about it, Kathy often complained about Kate even back then. Apart from Kate, she often got excited about gossip. She loved scandalous stories. Kate was always a favorite topic. She used to get along well with Kate often going out and enjoying casual chats together. Remembering this made me anxious. Until then, Kathy had been relatively kind to me, often going out for tea and even giving me unused branded items. They were said to be too small for her, but they were a bit worn and not quite my style. However, I accepted them not wanting to waste her kindness. After that phone call, I feared she might start treating me the way she does Kate. Unfortunately, my fears were confirmed. Kathy began calling more often. The neighbors had a grandchild. A 46-year-old actress just had a baby on TV. Why can't Rachel have one? She used to mock late pregnancies, but the pressure on me increased daily. George is an only child. So for Kathy, grandchildren can only come from George. If I don't have children, I'll forever receive Kathy's nagging calls. I've always had irregular periods. Irregular but regular enough and I've been told I can get pregnant. I shared this concern with George before marriage, but George laughed it off saying not to worry. What about your parents? I asked. Don't worry about them. He cheerfully replied. That response truly reassured me. I believed his parents would accept me as I am. I continued visiting the doctor just in case. Lately, my cycle had stabilized and it seemed I might be able to conceive. The call from Kathy came around this time. After much thought, I discussed Kathy with George. He said, Mom's just a bit anxious. We'll have kids eventually. It will work out. But she's so aggressive on the phone. What if we can have children? You worry too much, Rachel. We'll have kids. Mom's been kind so far. It'll be fine. George remained optimistic. But by then, it wasn't fine. His dismissive attitude only increased my anxiety. George was uncooperative about getting pregnant. Even when I prepared with supplements and exercise for ovulation, he would eat dinner, claim he's too tired, and go straight to bed. If he promised in the morning, he would go out at night, return late, and be too drunk. His frequent business trips made me feel avoided. He seemed uninterested in having children with me. Kathy's harassing calls and a husband uncooperative in having children, my stress grew and my recently stabilized cycle began to falter again. Yet Kathy's calls continued daily. When out, if she saw women with children, she would say, Women your age all have children. I want to buy such clothes for my grandchild too. In a sad voice, for nearly a year, I endured the situation until I finally spoke up. Kathy always blames me, but George isn't cooperative at all. There was a moment of silence on the phone before Kathy burst out, blaming my son? Unbelievable, isn't it the woman's issue? If a child isn't born, you've been getting treatment at the hospital for a while, haven't you? I heard it from George, you're trying to pin the blame on my son who has no problems at all. How outrageous. It seemed she didn't listen when I said I was not infertile, just a little irregular. And right after our call, Kathy contacted George at work. She ranted to him, making it sound like I called and started demeaning him. Mom said Rachel called and complained about being infertile and blamed me for not having a child. George said emotionlessly. That's not true. Kathy called. It's her usual hurry up and show me a grandchild call. 
So you're saying mom is lying? Not exactly, but her way of speaking might have caused a misunderstanding. It's different from the truth. Okay. George says this and then quickly retreated to the bedroom. I could no longer discuss Kathy with George nor George with Kathy. I didn't want to involve my parents, so I had no one to confide in about this difficult situation. Moreover, Kathy began spreading rumors that I hid my infertility and tricked them into marriage. At family gatherings, I began to be looked upon with disdain. Since that phone call, George started avoiding me even more. Then another blow came. After a routine checkup, I checked my phone to find dozens of missed calls from Kathy within an hour. Reluctantly returning the call, she yelled, Why don't you answer right away? You're not even working. You're avoiding my calls. No, I was at the hospital and couldn't answer immediately. You could have called back. I don't check my phone that often during appointments. You always have an excuse. Her anger was completely unreasonable. Kathy continued to rant without getting to the point. Apparently, her classmates were having grandchildren and she was irritated by it. She couldn't join the celebratory mood in their group chat and felt left out and upset. She probably felt they were looking down on her so she called me again and then she said something unbelievable. If you don't have a child by next year, leave. I was speechless. How can you say that? I'm trying and I'll continue, but I can't guarantee a child. Then, send $2,000 a month to our house from your money, not George's. I was even more shocked. Why did we talk about money? How did it come to this? Isn't it obvious this is compensation? You tricked us into marrying our son and now we might never see our grandchild. $2,000 a month is cheap, right? Be grateful. I was at a loss for words. I take care of my health and it's not solely my fault. We don't have children. George is uncooperative and Kathy's relentless harassment has destabilized my previously improving cycle. Blaming everything on me and even trying to take money, I realized I had to discuss it with George again. When I told George everything, he suggested a family meeting. I wasn't keen on it but thought maybe Kathy would be more composed than when it's just us. It could also be a chance to make George see Kathy's behavior towards me. So a meeting was set with me, George, Kathy, and James. I was concerned about James. Unlike Kathy, he had never directly clashed with me, but he also believed my infertility was the reason for no grandchildren. Seeing him made me more anxious, feeling like I had two adversaries. As soon as Kathy sat down, she started accusing me of hiding my infertility and deceiving them into marriage, even claiming I was stealing her branded clothes. She said the neighbors and relatives knew and called me a terrible daughter-in-law. I was stunned by her wildly distorted and one-sided accusations. The thought of her spreading such lies made me feel like the world was closing in on me. I responded more strongly than usual. Stop making baseless accusations. I told George about my irregular cycles a long time ago, and I have been stabilizing them with doctor visits and supplements. And you're the one who gave me those branded items because you couldn't wear them anymore. See, excuse us again, you're just a defective woman who can't have children, a lying thief. I lost my temper. It's not just my fault, George doesn't cooperate, always busy with work and your constant blaming calls have stressed me out, destabilizing my cycle again. I've been trying to stabilize it with treatments, supplements and exercise, but how can I get pregnant with all this stress? You are so selfish. Everyone faces challenges, but they still manage to have children. My friend's daughter-in-law had two kids despite work stress. You're the only one using stress as an excuse. Kathy's relentlessness fueled my anger further. You just don't want to lose your friends, right? Don't drag me into your petty pride battles. Even you only had George. Kathy's face twisted. How dare you say that? You haven't had any children. I glared sharply at her, then Kathy brought up her previous demand. Fine, if you don't have a grandchild by next year leave or else pay $2,000 a month as compensation. That's too little for all the trouble you've caused. Mom, calm down. George finally spoke. But she's right. I agree with mom. It's ridiculous to say I'm not cooperating. I'm just busy with work but still trying. We'll surely have a child by next year. 
I was in shock agreeing with Kathy while his wife is being blamed. Claiming to cooperate when it suits him, my anger resurfaced. Then I'll leave. Kathy and George looked shocked. Rachel, what are you saying? I'm saying I'll leave if I can't have a child and can pay $2,000. What choice do I have? Better leave now, right? Wait a minute. Kathy's voice softened suddenly. I didn't mean it like that. I said those things thinking you wouldn't take it seriously. Not that I meant it. So what do you mean? Kathy's brows furrowed in discomfort, then she glanced at James. Or is there another reason you need the money? Kathy fell silent. In that moment of quiet, James shifted. It's the club, isn't it? George and I exclaimed in surprise together. You've been spending my savings, haven't you? Kathy turned pale at James's accusation. But I understood. Kathy possessed those branded items for her club outings. She was always so proud. She probably wanted to show off at the club. Likely, she sold what she could and dumped the rest on me. James's unexpected words seemed like an opportunity I couldn't miss. Yes, and George, you have your secrets too. George loudly denied. What are you saying all of a sudden? I have no such thing. I placed several photos in the middle of the table for everyone to see. This is George, isn't it? The photo showed George walking arm in arm and kissing another woman. The room went cold. I felt George avoiding me, so I investigated and quickly found out about this woman. As I finished, I heard a sigh of utter dismay. It was James. Disgraceful. He looked directly at me. Rachel, I'm truly sorry. I was flustered. J James, you have done nothing wrong. Please, don't apologize. James said he couldn't apologize enough, but perhaps shocked that her husband was apologizing to his son's wife, Kathy sharply raised her voice again. No need for that. It's her fault we can't see our grandchild. Be quiet. You were the one trying to extort Rachel to pay off your club debts. And George, claiming to cooperate while having an affair? Both of you owe Rachel an apology. Kathy fell silent at James's scoldings. I hesitated to intervene, thinking it was their marital issue. I'm truly sorry. He continued. George remained silent, offering no apology. James sighed deeply. I'm tired of your excuses. It's always someone else's fault, right? You have said terrible things about my sister, too. I learned that Kate, James's sister, had been harshly mocked by Kathy and subjected to similar awful rumors. Because of the rumors spread by Kathy, Kate dreaded even going out to shop. She couldn't have her grandchildren over because of Kathy's lies. Now widowed, Kate was confined to her large home alone. Kate needs my support, but Rachel still has a future ahead. If these two won't even apologize, I'll do anything, even divorce, to support Rachel in building a happy family. I was moved to tears by these unexpected words. I had given up on finding any ally here, thank you. Stunned, Kathy began yelling again. How could you say such awful things? Do you know how much I have endured for you? If that's how you feel, we might as well divorce. I have been tolerating you, thinking you couldn't manage without me. Indeed, I had thought of doing that too. At James' words, Kathy couldn't retort and broke down crying. After that, my husband and I divorced. Kathy and James also divorced. It's been three years. Kathy thought James would come back to her unable to manage alone, but he went to live with Kate. They decided to support each other for the rest of their lives. James, still caring for me, occasionally contacts me with updates. My ex-husband remarried his mistress, who had a child but later found out through blood tests that the child wasn't his, leading to another divorce. It was, then he realized his infertility, confirmed by medical tests. Kathy is working to pay up her debts. Her story of a mature divorce due to club visits has spread, making her the target of gossip. I continued stabilizing my menstrual cycle after the divorce and am now married to a man I met at work. With the unwavering support of my in-laws and husband, I am expecting our first child. 
I look forward to nurturing my new family and his child.